Hi, kindergartners. Welcome to your TV classroom. Today is Monday, January 25th. How was your weekend? Mine was pretty fantastic. We played outside, we got to spend time as a family, and it was great. Before we do our learning today, let's check in with our zone. How are you feeling today? What zone are you in? I'm in the green zone. I'm feeling fabulous and I'm ready to learn. So let's get going. Today, we're going to do Make It Monday. So I'm gonna show you a picture. We're gonna figure out how many dots there are and then we're gonna figure out what number is the friend that makes 10. You ready? Let's go. How many more to make 10? Well, how many dots do you see? There are, oh, let me get my pen. There are eight dots. How many more make 10? What number goes with eight to make the friends of 10? Eight and two make 10. We need two more to make 10. Let's check it. Eight, nine, 10. Eight and two make 10. Great job. Let's do the next one. Wait a minute. We had eight. We said we needed two. Now we have two. So how many more do we need to make 10? Eight. Those were switcheroos or switch partners. <gasps> wooka wooka switcheroo. Eight plus two is the same as two plus eight. Fancy. Let's go to the next one. What if I only have one? Think about our tens frame. If I only have one, how many more do I need to make 10? I need nine. One and Nine make 10. Let's check and make sure. Say nine and count on. Nine, 10. Did we make 10? Yes, we did. Hmm, how many do you see? Four. What goes with four to make 10? I want you to picture that tens frame in your brain. Oh dear. Oh no, oh dear, I'm gonna have to do it over here. Okay, if I have four, how many more make 10? Six, because there's five and one and that makes six. So four, four, and six make 10. Kiss your brains. Nice job. How many do we have now? Five, because three and two is five. <gasps> I know this one. Five and five and five make 10. Woohoo! Okay. Today, we are learning to identify objects that have the same shapes. So we are going to, first of all, practice describing where some shapes are. And then we are going to be looking at shapes and matching them to other objects that are the same shape. Are you ready? Let's go. Hmm. Look at the first picture, this one right here. How could we describe the shapes in this picture? What do you see? Hmm. Where's the cylinder? Mabel, where's the cylinder in this picture? The green cylinder, Mabel said, is under the cone. It's right here. Here's the green cylinder under the cone. Okay. Mabel? Where is the cube? 
Uh-huh. Do you know where the cube is? The cube is next to the cylinder. Pebble, where's the cone? Friends, where's the cone? The cone is on top of the cylinder. And where's the sphere? It's next to the cube. Now look, we use the same shapes, but we put them together a different way and made a different shape. What did we do? How did we go from this picture to that picture? What did we do? Okay, so we lifted up the cone and we put the cube under the cone and put that back on top of the cylinder. Great descriptive words. And then what do we do with the blue sphere? We took the blue sphere and we moved it to the right of our new tower. Nice job. Now this is going to take you looking around you in the room you're in. I'm looking around in the room I'm in and I'm seeing some TV monitors and a clock and some doors and a rug, some windows and some cameras. I'm seeing some computers and some chairs. I see Mr. Kevin. I see lots of cords. So what you're going to do on your whiteboard, I'm going to I'm going to show you a shape and you're going to look around See if you can find another object in the place you're in. You don't need to get up, you just need to look. See if you can find another object that's the same shape, but a different object. You ready? I'm gonna draw mine down below it. You're gonna draw yours on your whiteboard. Cylinder, this is a cylinder. Do you have any cylinders in the space that's around you? Hmm. Mr. Kevin, do you see any cylinders in our space here at the TV classroom? Hmm. <gasps> I see one. Where is it? On the wall over there, it's red. I saw the same one. We saw the same one? Uh-huh. What is it, Mr. Kevin? It's a fire extinguisher. It is. It's a fire extinguisher. The bottom of the fire extinguisher is the shape of a cylinder. And then it has this little thing on the top and this little spout thing. But that's our fire extinguisher. Now, friends, I will tell you that I, art drawing is not my strength. So my pictures often look silly and that's okay. That's a fine picture. Okay. Now, Mr. Kevin, I wonder what they found. I heard someone say they found a garbage can that was a cylinder. What other cylinders did you find? A glass for water? Okay. Oh, someone somewhere that has those things that hold up the wall. Those are called pillars. That's a cylinder. Nice. Oh, I heard lots of great cylinders. Okay, now we're going to see if we can find circles. Hmm. Where? Oh, I found a circle, Mr. Kevin. Well, that's the same as the clock. We have to find one that's different than a clock. Oh, it has to be different than the clock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. Do you know what's a circle? The camera lens that's looking right at me in the camera. Oh, yeah. It looks like this. It's got, here's the camera. And then it has, that's my circle. Do you Neat. see a different circle? Hmm. 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 <gasps> Mr. Kevin, look at the rug. Circles. They're all over the number rug. They're circling the numbers. Okay. Should so, I show a picture of that? Yeah, let's to see. Our, to our kids. Let's see. Okay. Do you want to see the rug? Here's the number rug 
with circles and I'll show that to you. <gasps> there it is. Uh, see those circles on there? Look at all those circles. Ooh, circles, circles, circles everywhere. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of circles. A lot of circles. Okay, last thing. Are you ready, friends? The last thing we need to find is a rectangle. Hmm. Now we also have rectangle windows. We gotta find something else that's a rectangle. Hmm. Mr. Kevin, I wonder if you could find something with the camera and show them it. Yes. Let's see what Mr. Kevin finds in the TV classroom. That's a rectangle. I will find a rectangle. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I think I found one. Oh, you found one. This is so exciting. Tell me You're if, getting a backstage view of the TV classroom. Tell me if this looks like a rectangle. Hmm. <gasps> it does. But what, what's that, Mr. Kevin? It's a TV monitor. <gasps> a TV monitor at the TV classroom looks like a rectangle. Whoa, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Okay, friends, did you find rectangles where you are? Great job. Now, we're gonna do a matching game. I'm gonna tell you the shape on the top and you're gonna tell me what shape I need to draw a line to that's the same shape. So, this is a cylinder, it's a garbage can. What other cylinder is there in this picture? Toilet paper roll. The orange is a sphere. What other, what other sphere is in this picture? The baseball. This party hat is a cone. What other picture is a cone? The ice cream cone. This is a triangle, the yield sign. What other picture is a triangle? The flag. And this bus sign is a square. What else is a square? Great job, the picture. Now, this is a can of tuna. What shape is that can of tuna? It's a cylinder. Which object is also a cylinder? If you said the paint can, you were correct. Nice job, kindergartners. Today, you're going to do page 259 and 260, you're gonna practice matching shapes that are the same, all right? Today, we learned to identify objects that have the same shape. We identified the object with the same shape and we were able to tell the shape that they had in common. Just like we said, oh, this is a window that's a rectangle and we found a TV monitor in the TV classroom that's also a rectangle. That's pretty awesome. Before you go, you need to make sure that you have your ELA packet and your learning buddy and a pencil and a whiteboard to be ready to learn with Ms. Oslin. Have a great break, friends, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, I'm Gretchen. I'm a cellist in Northwest Symphony at Orchestra, and I'm a cellist out of Northwest Symphony at Orchestra too in which case I'm actually mostly playing on an electric cello. I'll talk more about that maybe at another time. I'm wondering who among you play instruments and who listens to instrumental music? I hope you listen to instrumental music because it does something different to our brains. Even though I also love listening to music with words too. And I'm going to play a piece, a song, that uh, is an instrumental version of a song with words called Pure Imagination. You don't have to know it. It's from the 1971 film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's a song that I play in the band that I'm in. I'm in a band with a couple other members of Northwest Sinfonietta. Anna Doak on double bass and Brandon Vance on violin. And then we have a percussionist, Don Dietrich, who completes our band, which is called Different Drummer. You'll see in the video that will show that Don plays alternative percussion. He built a desk that he uses for all of his sounds and it includes an old-fashioned manual typewriter and a trash can and suitcase and all kinds of things and we all helped find some parts of that desk and I wonder if you start looking around your home if you might find some things that make interesting percussive sounds. Uh, at one point looking for things I was looking for things that could be shaken so this is a container of granola and I found this um, cooling tray that made a great ring and pots and pans are good. I, I did take a cooking class where the teacher said not to tap on the side of a pan because she said that was mean to the food. But I think that if it's percussive and rhythmic, I think it's okay. So sorry to grown ups. Um, but it's fun to make some sounds. So in the video that you're going to see of our band, we're playing a piece that Anna wrote called Mischief. And each of us represents a family member in this musical depiction and the piece is a scene from family life. So you can imagine who is who and what we're doing using your imagination. I hope that you enjoy.
Hi, kindergartners. Welcome back from your break. And I see that a lot of you remember responsible choices when you come to your TV classroom. You grabbed your materials just like Mrs. Wally asked you to do. You have your pencil, you have your learning notebook, you have your learning buddy. Well done. Go ahead and take your learning notebook and your pencil and put it off to the side. You don't need them right now. If you want to keep your learning buddy with you on your lap, you can do that as long as you're still able to focus. Now let's remind ourselves what our jobs are when we come together today and every day in our TV classroom. Your job is to listen, share, read, and write. Now, strong listeners keep their eyes watching, ears listening, voice quiet, body still. And even though you're showing all that strong active listening posture, you also need to remind your brain to focus. That means your brain should be paying close attention to what I'm saying. Or if you're gonna be sharing with a learning buddy, someone else in the room with you, your brain should be listening to what they are saying. Today, I want to learn you, learn you. I want to remind you how to find a space for independent learning. And what that means is we went over this in September at the beginning of the year. But just like when you are in your classroom with your teacher, when you are wherever you are, maybe you're at home, maybe you're at daycare, maybe you're at a neighbor's house, we still need to remind ourselves of these routines and what we do when you close the computer or when you turn off the TV or you turn off the tablet, whatever device you're watching me on, I'm going to send you off after our lesson to work by yourself. I'm gonna give you a task that I want you to complete. And I want to remind you today how to find a space wherever you are so that you can be successful with your independent learning. Now, I want to show you a picture of my workspace. When I go off of, go out of our TV classroom, when I'm not in front of you, working with you, I go over to a table. It's actually right over there. And Mrs. Wally is at her table right now. This is what my workspace looks like. I have my computer, which is the materials that I need. I have my comfortable chair. I have my water is there. I have my hand sanitizer. I have my tissues. Oh, I have my pens and my notebook. So I have all the materials that I need. And it's right by a window. So I have some really nice lighting in my space. So today when you go off, to find a space for your independent learning. I want you paying attention to, is your body comfortable in that space? Now, that might not be in a chair. Maybe your body's not comfortable sitting in a chair. You need to decide what is best for you for learning. Your space also needs to have all of your materials that you will need for your independent learning. So today, the materials that you will need are your learning buddy, your pencil, and your learning or writing notebook. So you'll have all those materials and you'll take them with you to your space. You need to make sure that your space has good lighting also so that you can see what you're doing. Now, let's look at some of Mabel's workspaces and let's decide, Mabel, let's decide if Mabel made responsible choices for her workspace or if she needs to try again. So let's look. Look at that first one. Let's see, she has her material. Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to see that one. So maybe she's comfortable. She has her materials, 
but I think it's just too dark in that first one. So we're gonna say she needs to try again. Now looking at the middle space, she looks comfortable. It's plenty of light and she has her materials, but they're kind of all spread out. So if she were ne gonna need her colored pencils, she would have to get up and go get them. I would say that's not the best workspace for Mabel. She doesn't have all her materials ready. Let's see that last one. She looks comfortable. She has all of her materials where she can reach them. And she has that lamp there. So Mabel can see she has plenty of lighting. I would say that is a ding, ding, ding winner. Now, let's think about what your workspaces might look like. These are some options. Like I said, sitting in a chair might not be comfortable for you. And it depends what it is that you're going to be doing. So some of these children, the first child is sitting at a table. I see that they have plenty of light and they have their materials. And I can tell that they're focused. All of these children actually are focused. There might be times when if you have other people around you, you might work together on your independent learning. Maybe working outside would be a good place for you. If it's not raining, be a good time if you're gonna be reading independently for you to grab your books, go outside, get some fresh air, get some sunshine and do your reading there. Maybe you like to do your reading in your bed as long as you're not falling asleep. Maybe you have a comfortable beanbag chair that would be good for you. This is where you need to really pay attention to, is it comfortable? Do you have your materials? And is there enough light for you to see? Lots of different options for you for setting up your workspace for your independent reading. Now we're gonna reread one of my favorite books that we read at the beginning of the year. If you joined us in the TV classroom early in the year, you've read this book. If you didn't, you are in for a treat because this is one of my favorite books. Now, while we read this book, pay close attention to your active listening. Make sure that your eyes are watching, make sure that your ears are listening and make sure that your body is comfortable so that you can think about the story that we're reading so that you can share, because you'll remember, sharing is part of your responsibility today. This book is called, But Excuse Me, That Is My Book by Lauren Child. And this book is about a character named Lola and Lola's brother, Charlie. They go to the library and Lola has a favorite book that she checks out every time she goes to the library. But this time, someone else has the book. And her brother Charlie has to help Lola figure out how to solve this problem. Are you ready, kindergartners? Let's read. I have this little sister, Lola. She is small and very funny. Lola loves reading and she really loves books. But at the moment, there is one book that is extra specially special. One day, Lola says, Charlie, dad says he will take us to the library and we must go right now and get beetles, bugs, and butterflies. Lola loves beetles, bugs, and butterflies. I say, but dad, oh, excuse me. I say, but dad took that book out for you last time and the time before that. Then Lola says, but Charlie, Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies is a very special book. That is my favorite and I really need it. Now, 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 now. Don't you know, Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies is the best book in the whole world? 
and Lola says, you see, Charlie, the bugs are quite buggy and the butterflies are really beautiful and the beetles are very silly. The beetle gets stuck and his legs are very funny and he can't turn over. I say, I know that, Lola. Come on, dad's waiting. All oh, his funny little legs, Charlie. Okay, kindergartners, check in. How is the space that you are in right now working for you? Is your body comfortable? I noticed as I was reading, I was sitting really far away from the book and I couldn't really see the words. So I had to kind of readjust how I was seating, sitting so that I could actually get my work done of reading this book. Are you in a spot? where you can see the book, your body is comfortable, your eyes watching and your ears listening. Okay, let's keep going. When we get to the library, Lola is still saying Beetles, Bugs and Butterflies is the very best book in the world because you learn a lot and it is very great and extremely very interesting. And I really, really must get it. When we get inside, I have to say, shh, Lola, it's a library. We have to be quiet. Lola says, but I can't find my book, Charlie. And I say, then why don't you try looking for it in all of the books beginning with B? So Lola says, B, 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 where is my book? Where can it be? I say, Lola, be quiet. She says, I am being quiet, Charlie. I say, shh. She says, I am shushing. It's not here. My book's not here. I say, Lola, be quiet. Lola says, but Charlie, my book is lost. It is completely not there. I say, Lola, remember, this is a library, so someone must have borrowed it. Lola says, but Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies is my book. I say, but it's not your library. Someone else obviously wanted to read your book. Lola says, but they can't. It's my book. So I say, Lola, just think, there are hundreds and hundreds of other books in the library to choose from. There are spy books and dinosaur books, adventure books and scary books, books about princes, airplanes and astronauts, books about castles, dragons and volcanoes, monsters, mountains and pixies, and books about Romans. I say, look, Romans, this one tells you all about history in the Roman times, like how the Romans built long straight roads and rode chariots and had fights with swords. But Lola says, too many big words, Charlie. My book has got pictures that I really like. So I say, okay, Lola, let's try to find a book with more pictures and less words. How about this, an encyclopedia? It's got millions of drawings and millions of facts. You can learn about everything. Look, this page is all about helicopters. It's too loud, Charlie. I don't really like engines. These, oh, look, these big books. You see, Charlie, I am very right. Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies is the best book. Boy, Lola really has an idea about the type of books that she wants to read. Why don't you take some think time and think about when you go off to do your independent reading, which means you're gonna read by yourself, you're gonna make sure you have the right space. What kinds of books do you like to read? And that you're gonna make sure you have them in your space with you. Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy 
what kinds of books you are gonna make sure that you have in your independent reading space. Mabel, I am going to make sure that I have lots of books that tell really funny stories because I really like to laugh when I'm reading. Now, let's keep reading to see what happens with Lola and beetles, bugs, and butterflies. I say, you might be right, Lola, but see what you think of this. It's a pop-up book. But Lola says, a book that has cherry blossom rain in it is nice, Charlie, but it's not funny. Then Lola says, Beetles, Bugs, and Butterflies is really funny and it makes me laugh and laugh and laugh. I say, so it's an animal book you want. A book with lots of pictures, a story, no big words, and animals that make you laugh. Lola says, yep. I say, how about this, Lola? Cheetahs and chimpanzees. Lola says, are there beetles, bugs, and butterflies in it? I say, no, there are cheetahs and chimpanzees. Give it a try, Lola, please. Lola says, okay, Charlie, I will, but I won't be as good as. Beetles, bugs, and butterflies. Oh no, Charlie, look, that girl's got my book. I don't think she knows it's my book. No, no, just wait, that's my, that's my, just like my book, Charlie. Lola says, I want my book, Charlie. And I say, but you said you would try cheetahs and chimpanzees. Lola says, well, I'll try it, but it won't be as good as beetles, bugs, and butterflies. But then Lola says, oh, look at that. The cheetahs are very fast and the chimpanzees are very cheeky. And in fact, you know what, Charlie? This book is probably the most best book in the whole wide world because it is so interesting and so lovely. And you know it has the absolutely best pictures of any book ever. And the baby chimps are very, funny. Looks like Lola found another book just like her favorite book that she can take with her to her independent reading. And she only knew that she liked it because she actually looked at it and started reading it. Today we are learning how to find a space for your independent learning or reading, writing, whatever your work is. Now, you will remember that my space is comfortable for me. It has all the materials that I need so I don't have to get up in the middle of work. I can just stay where I am and focus and get it done. And it has plenty of light so I can see what I need to be working on. Some ideas just to remind you that might work for you might look like this. You might be sitting at a table. You might have other students near you that you can talk about, talk with about your work. You might get to go outside to do your reading work. Maybe you have a comfortable chair or maybe your bed is a good place for you. I want you to take some think time and think about where your independent learning space is. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Where you can best focus. Take some think time. Now, I want you to share your ideas with your learning buddy about what your independent workspace is going to be. Mabel, one thing I can think about about my workspace is it's it's comfortable, I have a comfortable chair, I have plenty of light. I have all my materials, but I really need to focus on making sure that my materials are 
organized so that I can find them better. Now, kindergartners, when you go off in just a moment, your independent work today is to find your independent workspace. I want you to practice reading just like Lola did. Find a book that you can focus on and you're going to write in your learning notebook all about your independent workspace. You're gonna draw pictures of it, maybe label what's around you, maybe write sentences about why that is the best space for you so that you can do your independent reading that you will do every day. Practice reading the three ways to read a book. Look at the pictures, look at the words, and retell the story. Keep your eyes on the book. You get started right away and you read for the whole time. Now is time for our affirmation. This is the time at the end of our lessons when we say positive things about ourselves before we go off to take on the challenge of our independent work. Now, the affirmation that I want you to practice saying it out loud is, I am responsible. You are responsible when you find your workspace, when you get your work done, and you let your teacher or I know how things are going for you. So let's practice saying that together. I am responsible. Say it out loud. I am responsible. Excellent job today, kindergartners, talking and thinking about finding your workspace, thinking about the types of books you like to read. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.